Hey, what's going on, y'all? So I received a message from one of my subscribers named Victor Trifan. And again, I'm sorry if I butcher your name. He pretty much sent me a message and said, hey, can I pay you to review a movie that I submitted for the Kitbash 3D Minerva Challenge or whatever? So long story short, I think he thought he was going to be a finalist for the Minerva Challenge. And I, I don't think he ended up placing at all. So he was really confused. He pretty much wanted to pay me to give him some opinions. Now, I, I did not judge that Minerva challenge. I did not submit anything at all. So I messaged him back. I said, I'll do you one better. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, first of all, watch your video on the channel. And I'm going to give you feedback so that everybody can see what the feedbacks are. All right. And I just a disclaimer, I'm not a professional filmmaker whatsoever, not at all. Um, I'm just doing this person a favor. And I told him I'll do it for free. So that's what we're going to be looking at right now. It's called Just Bugs, a KB3D challenge. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic so that it's not distracting. Okay, then. Tell me, how would you describe us? Us? As in, who's us? Us. Humans. The human being. Have you ever seen anything like us? We're the most superior race in the whole fucking universe. You can't say the most superior race, you idiot. It's a double superlative. Oh, who says I can't? The English fucking dictionary. Look, whatever. I'm saying we're both the Alpha and the Omega. Top of the fucking food chain. We go straight to the most hostile planets and make them our bitch. Bitch meaning a comfortable home for our asses to settle in. Now, doesn't that make us literally the most intelligent creatures to ever see the light of? Yeah, Gus. Sure, Gus. Whatever you say, Gus. Enough, you two. Gus, go for the job. We didn't push this pile of it all the way up here to have to listen to a stream of metaphysical bullshit. Roger, sir. Shuttle on dock. I'm going in. Scanners show a single area with life activity. No intelligence, no comms, nothing. It's probably some kind of bugs or larva. Sir, I strongly recommend that we try and get in touch with them. We are not sure that they are or they are not sentient. We should- That's negative, Sergeant. We have two hours to get down safe, otherwise we'll get down hard. Oh my god, just look what I found. Bugs. Just bugs. Ha! Told you. Intelligent creatures. The most intelligent creature. That's what we are. What can I say, Gus? For once, you're the most intelligent guy in the room. Oh, okay. I see we have a comedian here. Remind me to tell you some good jokes later. Gus, you're clear to drop the package. Roger that, sir. Preparing to drop the package. Container armed. Delivery in progress. Package dropped. Mission complete. I'm heading back for deployment. Roger that. For the record, sir, let it be noted that I was against this inhumane act. I know, but it's a matter of survival already. It's us, or them, and it's not going to be them. Not to mention that it was the perfect place for the settlement. Look at this beauty. Intelligent creatures. That's why... Oh, enough already. Have you no compassion? Don't you ever think about what if... You two stop immediately and supervise the descent. Make sure all gyros are working and that the geolocation is seen.
Congratulations, everybody. We'll have our settlement in no time. Tonight, we celebrate. Tomorrow, we start work. Be used on me, 800 hours, the community center. All right, so that is the movie, and now what I'm going to do is just go pretty much find some spots along the chronological order of this movie and just kind of give you some feedback. So so but just a disclaimer, uh, this is my own taste, my feedback, my two cents. I'm not a professional filmmaker whatsoever. I only have a high school diploma, so please, this is just, you know, kind of things that I notice when watching the movie. So starting from the beginning, the op opening shot was really, really good. This, this opening right here is like, wow, you're just setting everything up. You know, this is going to be amazing. But the thing that ruined this right here for me is the, 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 I don't know if that's a planet or something, just tracking from right to left. I'm not sure. I don't know why that planet was moving right to left, if that makes sense. Like, if you were to remove this, would it tell the same exact story? I don't know. I might be missing that. But to me, it just looks too dimensional when it's tracking from right to left. You know, I, I do like that little lens flare change there. But um, first time viewing, to me, it was like, what is that? And then, again, you have this thing coming from the foreground. Question that you can ask yourself is, when you're watching this, I'm like, do I really need that? Tracking from right to left? Or if I remove this, would it tell the same story? You know, always think about that. Um, can you remove things and it not affect anything? Because I was so focused on this that I think it would have been better if that thing was not there at all. Um, but yeah, uh, moving back. For this shot right here, it feels like it just didn't match the environment a lot. And if you look at it right here, I feel like I'm not sure how this was actually composited in, but I feel like this right here it is not really in that environment it's in. The sh there's no shadows. The shadows are not in the correct place, if that makes sense. Um, it just feels like it was copied and pasted on top of it, so it looks too bright, in my opinion. I feel like you know, it, it should have a little bit more shadow if you're up there. At least on this side of things, on the right side. The left side's fine because you're showing me there's a bright light right there. But 
I don't not sure why they would have light down here. That that's just my that's my opinion. Again. Okay, and this shot right here is really good. Um this looks a little bit better. And again, the shadows is the shadow side is like right here. I feel like if it, if you want to make this a little bit darker, it would blend a little bit better, if that makes sense. Um, let's go ahead and play this back. Some of these shots are freaking insane, by the way. It really reminded me of Interstellar by Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan's like one of my favorite directors. Uh, really, really cool. Um, that was a really cool shot. And those freaking thrusters look really good too. I don't know how you did that. Is that Niagara? That's super cool. Looks good. Some of the camera movements. Um, the only thing, and I, I'm going to play it back here so we can kind of talk about it. The only problem I had with this scene right here is the, some of the camera movements were so abrupt and fast. I think I know what you were trying to go with. I think you want to simulate how fast the ship was going, but I'm, I'm going to play this again and I'm going to show you. So this is good. All right, boom. And then you go pan right and right here, slow. It's moving out. I love that little dust right there. You added towards the end. Really nice touch. But this right here, so you go on top of the camera, you switch over, boom, you go turn left. It's like, where am I going? Like as a viewer, you're like forcing people to just turn really fast. And you go down, you go up again, again, go around, turn around. And to me, some of those movements were just a little bit too fast. You know what I'm saying? Just a tip. An idea next time, what would have been cool to see is if you had a, maybe like a camera down here, panning, following that ship across, that would have been cool. You know, a little handheld there would have been awesome. Um, I, again, I know what you were trying to go with, but some of the movements were like, it felt like a roller coaster, right? And even that pan right there was like crazy fast. Um, so again, slow down with some of your camera movements. And in this spot right here, I wish you would have put more bugs because you dropped a crap ton of bomb just to kill these three. So a little bit more would have made sense to me, but again, that's just my opinion. So let's move forward here. This shot is crazy. I love this. That depth of field in the back of just those thrusters kind of like pulling down. Um, but I did notice that right here, this piece right here, you have to change the material to render before DOF or after DOF because everything else is out of focus except for this piece right here. You can tell it's a lot sharper than everything else. I don't know if that's a post blur that you did, but this piece right here looks a lot sharper than everything else in here. But overall, man... This right here is good. If you would have slowed that down a little bit, oh man, that would have been so dope. That one's good too. You kind of see the difference between your fast movements and your slow movements. Look how slow you went in this one. It's really good. Okay. I mean, this sequence right here is pretty gold. I love that. Slow down with the movements and it drops. Pretty cool. I like that. And it's going to take off. Boom. And I think the camera was a little bit too early on that one. I think the camera was already moving before the ship actually moved. Just a little bit. Just a little bit early. Okay. So here it is. Yeah, the explosion. You know, it's going to kill that. But yeah, I think, I really think just to can't, one of the things that's just really not consistent in this entire piece was the camera movement speed, man. You, you nail that down, you're going to be, you're going to be good to go. All right, so they explode. Um, again, looking at just the environment itself. I mean, it is already white, so it already looks bright like that. So maybe darken it some just a little bit so it blends a little bit with, with the environment. All right, so let's move. This is a pretty sick scene right here. This is insane. This is intense, man. Again, this is some Chris Nolan stuff right here. Hey, I, I haven't even tried doing that. That looks great. Great job. I love it's in your head. You're visualizing it. You're putting it on here, which is good. You even got a freaking parachute to pop off. That's kudos on you, man. That's good stuff. 
And this is my favorite piece. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how long it took for you to do this. Or if this is included in the kit. But this is crazy. Somebody tell me in the comments if how that was done. Because that's cool. I know they did it with the Minerva commercial that they did. They dropped all the assets in. Um, I'm not sure if you did that one or it came with it. But that was super cool. Um, okay, next up, whenever you have people in the scene, try to not have this much headroom in the shot. That's a lot of headroom. So meaning like move the camera down some so that you don't have this much space because that's a lot of space. All right, so this whole piece... And I think this is more like for the writing. I love the concept of it. But I felt like with their dialogue, you gave it all away. You didn't really leave too much for people to guess. You're just like, oh man, that's you. You're about to drop a bomb on us, pretty much. Next time, maybe try to cut that out. Maybe leave it as simple as you see the same ship. And maybe the same person was standing inside the ship and leave it at that. You kind of just gave it away. Let's see if I can play it. Everything is going to repeat. There. Everything is going to repeat. What the? You just told the audience that. Just let them guess that. You know, like, I think if you show enough hints that the same thing is about to happen visually without having the characters say it would do you a lot of good. All right. So let's play it again. Everything is gonna repeat. Sir, this is exactly how I got here. Yeah, you just told pretty much the story entirely. Um, a, a cool thing you you would have done would be like the three of them just looking up, and that ship is about to drop a bomb, and as soon as it falls down, you fade to black. And that would have been it. You know what I mean? So just kind of like a little suspense instead of them saying, oh no. The ship's coming back. It's gonna repeat again. It's gonna drop a bomb on us again. Like you don't have to, you don't have to technically say that because people watched it, right? Commander, that's my ship. Yeah, that's my ship. Like you shouldn't have to say that. That's me, sir. All right. So I guess points points good cross. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got, man. Um, that's that's all the feedback I got. Again, I haven't even touched this scale of movie making in Unreal. So kudos to you. Um, and honestly, by not getting selected in the Minerva Challenge, don't get too down about it. But what I want you to do is whenever you're doing challenges like this, find one that has different categories. Because whenever they don't have categories, you're gonna be competing with people that work at ILM DNAG. Unreal Engine 5 is being used by AAA game studios and Hollywood studios now. So I'm not trying to say don't participate in these kind of challenges. If you're going to do it and they don't have student categories, beginner categories, professional categories, just know that coming into it that you're going to be competing with some professional people that work in studios. So you know right away that, hey, competition is going to be tough. And I think if you know that right off the bat, it's going to make you feel better in the long run because if you don't get selected, you're going to tell yourself, man, I competed with the best of the best. But if you can help it, find challenges or short film competition that has different categories because I said, like when I do my short film challenges, I have a rule that says if you work for a studio, you're a professional, you can't do it. I want new people to be able to participate, okay? And that's just me. I, everyone's going to have their own thing. But that's just my two cents on that. That's pretty much it. That is the feedback I got for you. Now, just a tip. I think you should save this project and come back to it later. You know, when, as you learn more about Unreal Engine, come back to this and just improve it. Uh, one of my favorite songs is Take On Me by AHA. And it took them, I think, five different versions to finally get the version that they want and they ended up going with. Uh, why I'm saying that is because don't give up on this project. You know, once you learn more, go back 
and see if you can do something better. But I really hope you got what you wanted from me as far as giving you feedback. And yeah, good luck with your future challenges and good luck with your Unreal Engine journey. See you later.